Welcome back to Reverie Under the Moonlight. We're now going into Kars Castle, the final area in the game. It's finally time to meet the Queen. Although we will not be going through the front door, we'll have to find another way inside. Getting some real Bowser's Castle vibes from this place. Probably because of the spinning spikes. And here we are, we made it inside. And for prosperity's sake, why don't we go ahead and lower that drawbridge? But let's talk to this cat first. That cat seems to know more about us than we do. It's really odd. And this last area of the game is pretty rudimentary. There isn't really any new enemies, so to speak, so there's really not much to comment on as far as, uh, as far as that goes. I mean, the, the castle itself is kind of nice. Kind of weird that there's just fog just coming in from nowhere. But, I mean, whatever, that's, it's not my house, I'm not here to judge you. As soon as we take care of these two enemies here, we can get one of the two remaining ivory bugs, which is way over here to the right. And in order to grab this one, you're going to need to make a leap of faith, because the platform that it's sitting on is invisible.
and we looped back around to the very beginning of the area. Which I forgot to mention that this save bell here is technically the beginning of this level. I mean as far as warping is concerned. Wow, that's a pretty big gap. Uh, maybe we are not supposed to go that way. Maybe progress is down this way. Unfortunately not, because it loops back on itself. But if you're really skittish about trying to jump that gap, you can always turn into a cat, and it makes it a little easier to clear. So, progress is upstairs, so we're gonna go to the right and get some goodies. No idea why the game keeps giving us money, because there's nothing left to buy. Like, literally nothing left to buy. I guess we can just give it all to the Forlorn Monastery charity fund. You know, come to think of it, wasn't Kaif supposed to be helping us with the Queen situation? We haven't seen her in a good while. Speak of the devil. And our reward for putting Kaif out of her misery is the Passiflora. Which is a full hill item, so if you need one of those, you got one. Anyways, enough grieving, we need to press on.
But before we continue, there's a fake wall right here. Now here's a really peculiar witch. Uh, she's the only red witch in the entire game. She's also slightly bigger than all the other ones. And she has this weird necklace of a sacrifice effect going on. Also, it wouldn't be a final area if there wasn't a mid-boss in it. And apparently, we have to choose between the real boss and a fake. And there's a number of ways we can tell which one is real and which one's fake. The biggest tell is that whenever they attack, their attack is, uh, colored blue. They also have a red ring around them when they charge up. And the last way to tell is that they fly lowest to the ground. Also, if you're really skittish about getting hit by their attacks, I recommend you transform into the cat because your hitbox is super small in the cat form, which makes it really easy to just walk underneath all these attacks. But that's pretty much the fight. Your, your gimmick has been revealed. I see right through you. Also, is, is there two moons? What's... There's a red moon there, and there's a big dot up there. What's that? I never noticed that before. The final ivory bug is right here, in this wall. And if you want to find out what we get for getting all 20 ivory bugs, tune in for the bonus video when I do that. And we made it to the final save point. Just beyond here is the final boss. So now let's go have an audience with the queen. So the queen is, as you could probably imagine, not much of a fighter. In fact, she's a really easy boss once you think about it. Her most common move is that she'll disappear and then reappear in your current position. And then she'll shoot a triad of triangles at you. 
but the triangles always stop just short of you. They never actually hit you head on. The explosion's supposed to hit you. And um, all you have to do is just back up a little bit, or forward, depending on where you are in the arena. Her other two moves is that she'll appear in the middle, and she'll spew out some more triangles. Uh, you really don't have to worry about them too much, because they all end up in static positions. And her third move is that she'll disappear and do this zigzagging motion. And all you have to do is just roll through that. And that's phase one. Here comes phase two. Phase 2 has two additional moves. Here's the first one, where she ends up in the middle, and she creates this cool-looking uh, spiral effect with her triangles. And all you have to do is just stand in the middle. And her second new move is that she will charge up and explode an explosion sphere of some kind. It also blocks uh, arrows, so you have to watch out for that. Like I said, this boss is very easy and there's hardly anything to it. Although I can't seem to shake the feeling that I'm forgetting something. Like something very important. And that's the final boss, and now for the ending. Well, the bad ending, at least. So, to get the good ending, you have to remember that there was something you had to do all the way back in Car City. And it involves that Seal Wind item that we got all the way back in the Royal Museum. So let's head back there real fast. If you recall, there was a little windmill that, uh, you could expect, and it wanted a box of some kind, which means you would need to bring out the sill wind and use it right there. And in doing so, opens this area right here. And we upgraded our leaf to a fresh spring leaf. I was actually kind of hoping it would be a chalk maple leaf, but... Oh well, it's whatever. Then again, I don't think that would be much of an upgrade anyway. So now that we got that out of the way, let's go back to Kar's castle. And yeah, we have to climb all the way back up to the final save point. And 
and let's uh let's do it right this time. Also, right about here is where you get 100% map completion. And if you want to find out what happens when you do that, stay tuned for the bonus video. And there's phase one. I'm gonna go ahead and activate some magic items so that way we can get some damage in early. You can also use the sparse thread right here because it's more ideal because right now all I'm doing is just standing here doing little bits of damage and you could probably get a whole lot more out of it if uh, you do it here. Yep, aiming the wrong way. Well, that is now the final boss, and now for the ending. Right? Psych. Third form, here we go. So third form is actually super easy. It only has three moves, and two of them are really just static moves. Uh, that's the first one right there. All you have to do is just stand in the middle. And the only one you have to worry about is when it charges up and shoots energy directly at you. The third move, it just shoots balls in the middle, and that's it. And uh, all you have to do is just pound on it until it's dead. And that is Momodora, Reverie Under the Moonlight. I really enjoyed this game, uh, mostly because it, it's, uh, it's, it's another one of those my pace kind of games, like Vogar. And um, I really like the way that this game feels when you're playing it. Uh, the movement feels just right. Uh, everything felt really good to do, especially those really cool dodge rolls. And... Um, yeah, I can't. I can't wait to see what else Bomb Service decides to do uh, with the, what they know now, going forward. Also, pro tip: if anybody's making games out there that wants me to play their game, add a dodge roll because if you do that, I'll pretty much melt like butter. Just saying. <laughs>
and we unlocked insane mode. Uh, we'll be showing that off in the bonus video. Oh? Okay. And find out more about that in the bonus video. I'll see you then.